Nvidia's making billions, but actually a lot's coming from gamers. AMD is looking to make a thousand watt CPU and they're also fixing one of their biggest problems that they have. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Friday. August 29th, 2025. We're gonna start off today with the earnings report from NVIDIA discussing how much they made in Q2. And surprise, surprise, it's a lot. Yes, they are making a ton from AI, but they're also making more money from other sectors. So NVIDIA revealing that they rose 56% over the Q2 last year. They didn't sell any H20 chips to China, which is a big bottleneck for them, but they're still making money fist over face. And in Q2, they made $41 billion in, in a single quarter in the data center, 4.2 billion for gaming, 600 million for professional visualization, then half a billion for auto and 173 million for OEM and others. So significant money all around. I will remind you that before this entire chat GPT AI boom happened, gaming and data center were basically equivalent. Now data center is about 10X. It is a ridiculous sum of money that Nvidia is bringing in, but gaming's doing well. That 4.2 $2 billion is a significant increase over previous quarters that they've announced. So $4.3 billion is significantly higher than we've seen in any of the previous quarters in, in recent history from NVIDIA. So it does look like the RTX 50 series is selling well. The curious thing is whether or not how many people are buying these NVIDIA GPUs that are RTX 50 series for anything like AI. It's probably a significant amount. There's plenty of reports out there about how gaming GPUs are being reutilized in AI data centers, but it doesn't appear to be as fishy and as weird in the numbers as it was when this was happening for mining GPUs back in the day. I do think that's probably boosting it to some extent, especially in other foreign markets. But it also, if you just look at things like the Steam hardware survey, as well as various other reports from companies that sell GPUs, the RTX 50 series is selling pretty decent. Recently, the 5070 is a the best-selling card of the newest generation between AMD and Nvidia. So it does look like there is a significant uptake of the current generation. But they are they're making money in the gaming sector. They still have reasons to produce the RTX 60 series whenever that happens to hit the shelves. But they're still going to prioritize AI for the foreseeable future as long as it continues to make them more money than they could possibly swim in. And AMD is not making more of some of their stock coolers that they were including in their CPUs. The Wraith Prism and the Wraith Spire are being killed. They're done. The Wraith Stealth is the only one that's gonna be shipped in certain CPUs moving forward, but the ones that used to have the Prism or the Spire are likely no longer going to have an integrated cooler that you use for cooling your chip. You're gonna to have to buy one yourself, you cheapskate. And you're definitely gonna to have to do that with their upcoming Venice Epic chips. Obviously, that'd be a data center thing. You'd likely be accounting for this in the first place, but at the the OCP APAC 2025 summit, Microloops detailed some information that they have with regards to next generation AMD CPUs and how they're working on kilowatt level cooling for the CPUs, going up to as high as 1400 watts is the expectation. So there's a detail on how the SP7 needs to be cooled, which is the socket for the Epic chip, and just discussing all of the cooling technology that's going into making sure that they're actually able to keep these things not from exploding into a fiery furnace of death, which is also something Intel's discussed at length previously, working on a 2000 watt cooler situation, two kilowatts. They don't have chips that high yet. Mostly they're in the 500 to 1000 range, especially when overclocked or like super benchmarked, but looks like AMD is getting into that race as well. Beefing them and making them really hot and heavy, which I hope Reese comes in with the deals. He gives us hot and heavy ones. Yo, welcome back to UFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Happy Friday, everyone. Hope you guys had a good week and I'll send you off to the weekend with these deals. Starting off, we have this Lemo Key X6 wired 65% mechanical keyboard for only $13.99, making it $23 off. But then a good combo to pair is the Razer Death Adder V3 wired gaming mouse for only $34.99, making it $35 or 50% off. And then lastly, we have this Intel Core Ultra 7 265F desktop processor for only $224, making it $25.99 off. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, 
I'm gonna hand you back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, it looks like if you bought an RTX 2060 all the way back in the yonder year of 2018, you got a pretty good deal, because that's gonna allow you to play Battlefield 6. The PC requirements for that game dropping 1080p, 30 FPS, low settings minimum spec is for an RTX 2060, which I know a lot of people wanna say that the 2060 is a modern GPU, but I just wanna throw some perspective out there. That would be like expecting the GTX 560 to be the minimum spec GPU when the RTX 2060 launched. That was not what people were expecting back then. It was actually a little higher end than that. Having a seven-year-old GPU being the minimum spec is kind of intriguing, especially when a decade ago, a seven-year-old GPU was no longer being supported whatsoever, let alone being the card that is still relevant for a modern game. I just, I want us to be appreciative and thankful. That's all I'm trying to say there. If you want to get the best there is, 4K, 60 FPS, you're looking at uh, 4080, 7900 XTX. There you go. It's, it seems like it can be a demanding game, but they're making it so you can run it with an ARC A380 in case you want to you want to stay on the lower end of things. But in case you want to go on the middle range of things with Intel's next generation Nova Lake CPUs, we got shipping manifest indicating that they're shipping somewhere for testing more than likely the nova lake 28 core chip is hitting a shipping manifest it is not the highest end core count that we're expecting to get from nova lake which is supposed to come out after the arrow lake refresh that is potentially going to debut later this year arrow lake refresh is supposed to be just a clock speed bump not much else going on to it arrow lake is going to give us 28 core on the ultra 7 spec and then a 52 core on the ultra 9 spec just mind-boggling numbers in terms of core count allegedly 125 watt tdp on that 28 core i'm pretty sure if you overclocked it right you could get up to a thousand watts i would think but what i want to get up to is uh, a sapphire motherboard because they're teasing a global launch for their motherboard sapphire a company known for making graphics cards in fact i just filmed our 9060 xt review with one of their gpus their motherboards have been available in various different flavors but mostly in countries that are not the united states or actually in very select regions now it looks like they're going to be changing that with something exciting coming soon they showed off some x800 series motherboards at computex including ones that had asus's btf power connector but it looks like a lot of the launch is centering around their b850 motherboards that will not have the btf connectors i don't care i just i like seeing that there's going to be more motherboards out there sapphire dropping these they make good looking motherboards as well they make good looking graphics cards i love their nitro plus we're actually giving a pc away with a nitro plus gpu over on our twitch.tv forward slash ufd music streaming channel where we have music that you can use for your content or just listen to while you study work or whatever just have it on in the background i like sapphire stuff looks like it's going to be coming out more available in different parts of the world and I'm, I'm excited to build with that and I'm also excited for the announcement that came out in an exclusive interview with CRN with regards to what AMD is doing behind the scenes to make sure that they're actually setting the stage for being powerful in the years to come. AMD is saying in this interview that they have boosted partner funding by more than 40% this year to create a true channel program and that this is a gigantic movement for the entire company. The guy who's the Global Commercial Channel Chief started that in January and has moved just many different things to make this important. Now, one of the things you might be wondering is what is partner funding? What is the channel? What does that mean? This is AMD's ability to build relationships with the companies who are either using their parts, selling their parts, or integrating their parts. So you think AMD has struggled to get into pre-builds. That's part of the partner channel situation. AMD struggled to come out with new laptops at a regular cadence that keeps up with Intel and in Nvidia, that's part of the partner channel. It's their retailers in various different parts of the country, making sure that they have promotions that are going on or making sure that their products are out there. The whole like rebate situation with the 9070 and 9070 XT to keep them at MSRP, that's part of the partner channel. And so the fact that they're investing a lot more in this shows that they're taking it seriously. This is one of the areas where Intel and Nvidia have absolutely dominated and made it so that they have a stranglehold on the industry. Nvidia comes out with new laptops for their GPUs all of the time. AMD Framework chose to go with the 5070 because there was nothing better than the 7700S. That's 
allegedly something that could be fixed with them spending more time and attention to the partner channel. So this is coming after things like a systems integrator executive talking about how AMD had a whole th event that they did in July with Lisa Sue doubling down on her commitment and AMD's commitment to the channel and to its partners. And that they've been getting lower engagement from Intel ever since things uh, have gotten a little rocky for them. So this is the perfect time for AMD to start switching things up and making it so that they are actively investing in. Now, there are some places where they're not gonna be doing Doing that, such as in the data center with their Instinct GPUs. In this interview, they detail that this is more of a hands-on thing that they're doing. Companies like Meta, Microsoft, etc., they're gonna have people who are direct representatives making sure that their uh, gigawatt data centers are all being powered properly. But for everything else from like retailers or distributors, they're actively working on that. And the person giving the interview says that they went to the leadership and said, believe that in order to get the most discerning buyers, the highest performing buyers on the planet, they can either hire another 250 people in the Americas and try to get to that next layer, or they can really start to empower this channel model. And that is exactly what they chose to do. Again, a 40% increase to the channel investment budget for 2025. It should make it so that in years to come, we start seeing AMD being a little bit more broadly out there than they have been in years past. And while Ryzen has been great, AMD has been doing well with their GPUs. They've struggled to break into that foundational club of companies that like traditionally stay with Intel and in NVIDIA. This is the way that they make it happen is with a better channel program strategy. And it looks like it's gonna happen. Exciting times for AMD moving forward. Exciting times for UFD Tech right now because we're gonna be done with this episode of Hot News and I'll see you back here for more of that next week.